OK, uh, data classification. So data classification is a way that we uh, classify our data uh, our group data into different uh, subgroups. And next, we are going to each group uh, different visual symbols like colors, uh, shapes, etc. Uh, so data classification is uh, widely used when we want to visualize the data, especially in geography, that when we create maps, so we will need to use different type of the data classifications. Uh, so there are four types of data classifications commonly used. Uh, actually, in ArcGIS Pro, we have more than those four um, classifications, but those four are the most commonly used. Uh, so we have the equal interval, uh, we have quantile, uh, we have natural breaks, and we have standard deviations. And of course, uh, in most cases, you can also manually classify your data. Uh, so for the same type of data, so for the same so for the same data set, actually, when we apply different type of the data classifications, the data will be, uh, so for the same value, it will be classified into different groups. So for example, if you look at this value. So this value will be classified into a second group by using equal intervals, but it will belong to the first group if we are using the quantile. Okay, so uh, so first thing that keep in mind that by using different classifications, your data will be grouped differently. So the same values may belong to different groups. So the visual patterns that when we create by using different classifications will be different. So that means date visualization is never be objective. So date visualization is actually very, very subjective. And the visual patterns can be easily distorted by choose different type of the visualizations, different charts, and also by choosing a different date classification methods. OK, so choose the, the appropriate data classification is very, very important. And also the number of the classes also is very important. So because our human eyes or our brain cannot distinguish uh, multiple classes, so normally we should not have more than five classes. So in this case, we have three classes or three groups. So normally we should have five or less than five groups or classes. So if you have more than five, then our brains tend to cannot interpret the data um, correctly. Okay, so let's look at what does those each classification mean. So the first one is called uh, equal intervals. So equal intervals mean that the difference among those groups are the same. So they divide the data at equal intervals. So first we have our data like this and we always sort data okay from the minimal value to the to the maximum value. And next we decide how many classes or how many groups we have. Again remember that we should less than five equal or less than five. So suppose that we want to have five groups and to classify the data by using uh, equal intervals, what we can do is that first we calculate the range. Okay, so if you remember that the range is the maximum value, uh, subtract the minimal value. And next, we use the range divided by the number of groups, so we get the interval. Okay, and next we start with the minimal value plus interval, so we have our first first group. So everything that beneath, uh, below the this value will belong to the first group. And next, we use that value again to increase by this interval, and we have our second uh, group. So everything that within this range will belong to the second group, and we use this value to plus increased by our interval so we have our third group so no matter how many items are there so this will be our third group and we continue and in this case our fourth group 
has nothing and our fifth group have two values. So the ultimate result will be that we, we actually have uh, four groups. Okay, so the ultimate value by using equal interval is that we have four groups because the fourth group uh, does not have a value. So we, although we divide by we, uh, by five, we only have four groups of values. So that is using the equal interval. We can also classify the data by quantiles. So quantile means that the same numbers of the variables of, of the values in each group. OK, the same number of the values in each group. So first, we still sort the data from the minimal to maximal. And we divide the total number of the data items by the number of the groups. So here, if I using four group as an example, so we have 14 or uh, five groups, sorry, five groups as an example. So we have less than five. So 14 divided by five. So we have 2.8. So we choose the closest whole number. So three. So that means each group should have three var uh, three numbers. So now we can see the first three item will belong to the first group. The second three item will belong to the second group. And next three item will be the third group and next will be the fourth group and then lastly we have only two items that will belong to the fifth group okay so that is how we can classify the data by using quantile uh, next is classification by using natural break uh, so natural break is a default uh, classification in ArcGIS pro so when we create maps uh, or visualizations, so natural break is always automatically selected. And that also has a lot of people that criticize using natural break. So natural break divides the data that we try to find out the biggest jump in that data. Okay, so the mathematic approach of uh, calculating natural breaks is a little bit complicated. But the general rule is that we want to find out the biggest difference. So for example, if we still want to divide that one into five groups, so by we, we rank the data, we sort the data, and we find out the first biggest difference, so probably here. So that is the first biggest difference. And next, we are looking at the second biggest difference, probably here. Um, and next, we are looking for the third biggest difference um, probably uh, I, I may not be accurate but probably here and last we find out the fourth biggest difference so we are looking for the biggest difference among the data and and now we can group our data into five classes so this will be the first group this will be our second group, and this will be our third group, and this is our fourth group and also fifth group. Okay, so natural break is to find out the biggest jumps in the data. Okay, so the way that to do that mathematically is a little bit complicated, but this will can tell you the biggest differences. Okay, so the difference between the groups are maximized. Okay, so that is using a natural break. Uh, standard deviation uh, is pretty st straightforward. So basically, we just divide the data with either 0.25 intervals, standard deviations, or with half standard deviations, or one standard deviations. OK. So we around the mean values. So around mean values, we find out one standard deviation, two standard deviation, etc. Or um, the first a quarter of a standard deviation the first half standard deviation, etc. So for example, in this case, uh, this is a mean value. And we use mean value plus one standard deviation. OK, standard deviation. And the mean value plus the two standard deviation, OK, etc. So we can until we cover the entire range of the data. OK. So finally, we can see that for again for the same type of the for the same data set, uh, when we apply different 
classifications, when we try to classify the data into five groups by applying those different classifications, we can see that data are classified into differently. Okay, the data are classified differently. And if we put that onto a map, uh, the information or the perception that we can get from the mo those maps are different. So here we are looking to visualize the foreign-born population in Florida by using different uh, classification methods. So here we have the equal intervals, quantile, uh, natural break, and our standard deviations. Uh, we didn't mention the other two. So if we look at the equal intervals, we can see there is a cluster pattern that we can see here. Okay. And if we look at the quantile, we can say, okay, so there are two hotspots. And if we look at the standard deviation, so there's one hotspot, and the other places look like similar um, to this location. And also, if we look at the natural break, so that also give, can tell a different story. Okay, so the question you should always ask yourself is that which type of the data classification you should choose. And unfortunately, there's, not, there's no one that can fit all the scenarios. So that's really depending on the, the specific project that you are working with. Okay, and also the specific question that you are trying to explain. So there's no one that can fit all the requirements. So it is really up to you to choose the right. It is only up to you, the creator of the map, that to choose the appropriate classification method.